All right, I would like to demonstrate how I draw a treble clef. Start with a C. Okay, and you wrap around the middle. The distance here should be the same as from here. Wrap around again, you get bigger. Distance should be the same from here to here as here to here. And then you curve up like that. Straight down the middle. Well, just like that, treble clef. One more time. You start with a C. Curve around. To this side, these distance should be similar. Straight up top. And fall down through the middle. Hold up at the end. So yeah, that's the treble clef. But think of it as starting on the first space here and doing a C. And that will get you started. Wrap around. Distance should be about the same there. Go to the ceiling and drop down. And wrap back, which is you really end with another C. <laughs> yep, that's a treble clef. And the quarter rests, um, we start out kind of like the treble clef, we want to draw a C around the second line from the bottom. Then we're going to do like a two. A two is going to face up a little bit. It's a little crooked. Two. See that? Two there. Try that again. Draw a C around that uh, second line from the bottom and then draw a two, yeah, kind of where we change point is kind of on the middle line there. Two, and one more time. C, two, different style. You can even do it slimmer depending how much room you have in your music. Yep, that's a quarter rest. Here I'm gonna show you the difference between a treble clef and a bass clef. How you would, how you draw draw them. So I think earlier. We drew a triple clef starting with a C. Okay. And then we wrap around the C, keeping a nice distance from the from the middle. Here there's the same distance as there's so there, and we have our treble clef. Now our bass clef, we actually start with a C as well. So this one's the second line from the bottom. Our bass clef is the second line from the top. We're gonna go around that line. Okay, it's just like we drew a C around this line. Our bass clef, we draw a C around this line. See that? All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop around, okay? So right here's the kind of the middle of where we started. So we wanna keep that same space from here to here as from here to the outside of that. We just go down just like that, a little crooked. And then we put two dots. So our bass clef, we'll try that again. See if we can do it better this time. C, okay, curve around, and we'll go straight down more. There we go. That's our bass clef. All right, next we're going to draw a quarter note. And uh, a quarter note can uh, the, be facing up or down. So but we'll first start with uh, how we started out. This is how I do it. We will draw kind of like a forward facing dash first and then we'll fatten it up so we'll start in the middle and fatten it up it's going to create like an oval you can make it as fat as you want and then since this note is higher than the middle line we'll start here and pull pull our uh, line out of it there just like that for some reason i can't remember what that's called <laughs> try it again that fatten it up okay and then pull the line out or if we're doing a space just like that fatten it up just like that um, if we go below the middle line middle line you can go up or down with your uh, with your um, line but if we go below the middle line it's the same slash, okay, 
fatten it up. There we go. Uh, we're going to go on this side though. Okay. Because it's the top high parts here. Since we're lower than the middle line, we want to keep our everything within the in our writing space here. That's why we change the direction of it. Forward dash like that. And fatten it up. Kind of like an oval. It doesn't have to be a circle. It all depends how much ink you want to use. Just like that. That's a quarter note. All right. I'm going to show you how to draw an eighth note. And basically what an eighth note is, is um, it has a, what we call a flag. Um, so we first we start out with a regular quarter note. And we do that uh, forward slash line, just like that. And then we fatten it up. Okay. And then starting, since we're above the middle line, we want to start with our stem uh, on this side. Okay. So we're going to keep our stems within the music. So we start with that. Next would be our flag. And we do the, what we call I call the ski slope. So the ski slope is uh, we're going to start our little hill for our ski slope right below our note. Okay. Now the note's on a line, so we're going to start it right in the middle on the line below the line that our note's on. Okay, that would be right there. Draw a little hill and do like a ski slope. There it is. See that? Do that again. Forward slash. Fatten it up. Stem. We draw our stems. We want to go at least two lines or two spaces. Um, that can change depending on how, uh, how big your staff paper is. Okay, and then... Since we were notes on the line, we start the line below it, right in the middle, right in the middle underneath, little hill, ski slope. Yeah, just like that. If we go on a space, so there's on a space, let's fatten it up. Okay. Draw a line. Okay. Now, since we're on a space there, we're going to go in a space to start our hill. Okay, and then ski slope, just like that. Yeah, you can even get really stylish if you want to make it look stylish. We can even curve it in sooner, like that. It kind of changes the look a little bit, makes it more sleek. So you can have fun with that. Now if we're below the middle line, as you know, our stem is going to be on the other side of our note. Okay, the upwards part. Our flag is always going to be on this side. Okay, so the direction that the music is being read is always going to be ahead of the note. Okay, so if it's on this side, it would be the right side. All right, so we start with uh, right there's our uh, note on the line. Okay, so we start on the line here. Do a little hill. Okay, ski slope it. See that? Again, fatten it up, draw our stem, it's on the line, so we start on the line here, our distance here should be about, you know, the distance from there to the middle of our note, little hill, and then ski slope it, just like that, if we're on a space, like this, fatten it up, line, okay, start in the space now, now on the line in the space is one, one space above our note. Little hill, ski slope it, just like that. Okay. Um, yep, that's how we do an eighth note. All right, next I'm going to talk about where we put the dot if we're dotting the note or where we put the sharp or flat if we need to uh, you know, write an accident on our music. Um, generally, we put sharps and flats in the key signature, but... Uh, this time uh, we'll, we'll show you how to do that. Um, so we'll draw our note. Say we have a quarter note. Start with the line, fatten it up. Okay. Stem, okay. If we're dotting this note, the dot 
all these comes after the note. So we're talking about the dot that makes the note longer. Okay, so all these come down. I just put it on the space that it's on. Now if we have our note on the line, that we'll have to put it up a little bit on the space above it. Preferably above it, not below it. Now for for stems going the other way, let's say our note's down below the middle line, like that. Okay. The dot, once again, is coming after the note. Okay. It's just like the flag when the eighth note comes on the after the note. Okay. It's on this side, it's always on this side, the note. So, like if you had a flag for eighth note, it would be on that side or on this, that side of this note. Our dot is very well. Now, here are the lines in the way. We'll put a little above it. Okay. Or this. Right there. Nope. Same thing. I meant to write that on the space. There we go. On the space, we can just put it right after it. It's always after it. Now, with the sharps and flats, it's going to be a little different. Draw our note here. Fatten that up. Like this. Okay. So the sharps are going to come before. Okay. Draw for and sharp is just a number sign. Um, you can make it look italicized if you want, simply by slanting the whole thing. My sharp is a little on the low side there, but you want the line in the middle. Let's try that again. Okay, so we start here. There we go, a sharp sign. Ah, oh, that's a little on the high side. But yeah, the sharps come before, um, and the flats come before. If we were to draw a flat, it'll be uh, it'll be before be before a note. So, of course, it's like a B sign, except we're gonna. Do this with our flat. See that? Kind of bend it a little bit. It's down here. And our stems on the other side of the note. Our sharp and our flat are still going to be on this side. Okay. It's always going to be uh, be on this side. Yeah. So if we have uh, up here, the dots are after, sharps and sh flats are be written before. Okay, next it'll be uh, how we draw our uh, time signature, or we should say key signature and time signature at the beginning of our music. So we'll do uh, we'll do the treble clef. I usually draw the treble clef first. Um, we'll start here, do a C. Okay, wrap around. Distance, seam distance, there, there's there, to the ceiling, straight down, another C. Okay, we can draw a line here. There we go. It's the beginning of our music. All right, now uh, we always draw our uh, key signature first. So that would be, you know, how many sharps or how many flats. If we're in the key of G, we have one flat, I mean, one sharp, I meant. Okay, so we'll put that on the F sharp line. The F line, which is now F sharp, and then if we have uh, our time signature, and is let's say it's four four, we're gonna put four on these two spaces. So there's those two spaces is for the first number, and then the next two spaces is for the second number. So this is four four time. There we go, four four, um, and that's how I do my time signature. Um, now you very well can draw a dash in between, but I don't think it's necessary. Or if it's three, four, you can draw your three. And then your four, and there's three, four. Yeah, looks clean. But yeah, the sharp sign always goes uh, the key signature. The sharp or the flats go before your time signature. Yeah. So we know how to draw um, quarter rest, but Let's go over drawing eighth rest. Um, it's not too complicated. Um, 
we're going to do that forward slash like we do for uh, drawing notes. We start out with four tasks. It's going to be on the, the A, bottom of the A space or on the G line. We start on the G line. We'll just say the G line. And we're going to go for nice, decent forward slash, okay, all the way to the middle of the C space. From that second line from the bottom to the, the, the middle of the second space from the, from the top. Okay, and then we can put a dot straight above our starting point from down there. See that? Straight above. We start here, our dot goes there. Okay, and this, uh, then we're going to do like a wave, kind of a, just like that. It's a nice wave. That's our, that's our eighth rest. Let's try it again. This, middle, dot wave okay and this we can we can add some style you can really curve it back like that if you really want to if you want to do something a little different whatever matches your writing style you can do it like that more curly style or you can slant it more do a more open style it all depends how much room you have in your music now 16th note We'll just keep going with their line. So instead of stopping in the middle of that space, we'll go to the next space as well. Right above it for that space. And then you go over right above the space, kind of like stairs. Okay, and then wave, wave, just like that. Or a fish hook. You can call it a fish hook too if you want. Yeah, a fish hook would be a good name for it. So that's our 16th. Now, I personally, if you're doing a 30-second note, which I rarely draw, you probably want to start down here and go like that. That way we can fit it. Our goal is to fit every, as much as we can on our music. <laughs> but that's, that's a pretty long, that's a pretty fast note, too, um, especially for a rest. Yeah. Next, we're going to draw half notes. Um, now, uh, half notes, not quite light quarter notes. They're a longer note, um, but drawing them, we have to use a little different method. If you remember, um, a quarter note, we could just draw a forward slash and then fatten it up. Okay, and that makes it easy, especially if you're bad at drawing ovals like I am. Of course, when we get to half notes, if you're bad at drawing ovals, that's kind of a, a tough situation. But we can kind of keep the same idea, except for the forward slash. We'll put a, you know, let's say we're, our note's going to be on the line. We can put a dot here, a dot here, kind of an invisible line now between those two dots, except we'll start here and curve around. Okay, there we have our oval. So we have a hill on top and a hill on the bottom, and then we do our, our stem. So yeah, um, if we're on a space, we do a dot here. If the note's going to be on the space, we put two dots below and above the space. Draw our oval, okay, and a line. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. Up here, if, we're, if it's above the middle line, okay. Of course, our stems could be pointing down, so we'll start here. Little hill, little hill there, down just like that. Yeah, our stems are always pointing towards the B line uh, or the middle line because we want to fit as much as we can on our on our on our staff here. So that's uh, that's a half note. That's how you draw a half note. Whole notes. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because uh, it's relatively uh, straightforward. Um, if it's on the line, you're simply going to draw an oval. So uh, if it's on this line, you can start anywhere where it's the easiest and just draw oval. Just like that. Now if it's on the space, I usually start at the top and go around. Or you can start at the bottom and go around. But there you do whatever is easiest. Um, make it oval. 
Of course, if it's a circle, that works too. Oval looks a little bit more stylish. And that's how you draw a whole note, which would get four counts if it's in 4-4. Four, four. So this time we'll do eighth notes, but they're going to be the connected eighth notes. Um, generally, we connect eighth notes just to help with counting. Um, so you can actually see the rhythm in the music, um, especially if there's a row of eighth notes. Um, example, if it's uh, four counts in a measure, um, and there's uh, the whole measure is full of eighth notes, we could connect two pair of the eighth notes up, and then you can see that there's four counts. Um, so yeah, eighth, connecting eighth notes can help us with that. It kind of makes it easier. You don't have to write as many flags either. So we'll start by writing a forward slash note, forward slash like that, and we fatten it up. Okay, we want to go at least that. We're on a space. You need to go at least two spaces, and we're gonna go a little bit more. Okay, it makes it easier if we can draw between the line and not on the line. If you draw on the line, you won't see it. So there's our connected eighth notes connected together yep um, now if you have to put them really close together like this because let's say you're running out of room or you uh, have a lot of fast notes like 16th and 32nd notes you can maybe uh, go to just one space you know you can break the rules a little bit um, let's say you have a row of notes that change uh, just like that. Fatten it up. All right, just like that. So we go. We'll go two spaces. We'll stop right there. That should be enough. Okay. So um, here we'll go two lines. Stop in the middle of the space above it, two spaces, stop on the line above it, two lines, stop on the middle of the, well, the pretend space above it. There we have it. And we connect them just like that. And sometimes that happens. There we go. We have our row of notes there. Um, let's do it again. So we'll go. Uh, forward slash fatten up forward slash fatten up forward slash fatten that line up forward slash fatten that line up okay let's we're gonna do uh we do 16th notes here okay so what i do for 16th notes okay we go two spaces stop the line go two lines stop the middle of the space i draw my line first Okay, and then since it's a 16th, it'd be two lines, okay? Then, when we draw our stem going up, I stop at the first line, okay? The same applies if you're going the other way, down. Make sense? Let's, let's do one going down. So we'll forward slash forward slash fatten it up forward slash fatten it up forward slash fatten it up okay so we have music now the question is should our stem go up or should our stem go down well it's kind of up to you we're we're uh, we're actually closer to the Close, we have more notes below our B than above. So technically, we should go up. So we'll go up for that. So there we go. And I didn't do it in the order that I had said earlier. Let's try that again. Okay. We'll do it here. This time, I want my stem going down. So we'll, we'll do one starting here. Okay, now our stem's gonna be on this side, on the lower side. So two spaces, 
two lines. Okay. You know, I'm gonna go to here. So we have two spaces to the line. Draw a line just like that. Yeah, so that's how we connect notes to make our row of eighth notes.